Hey everyone, Azale here. With the completion of the LCS Championship, we thought we'd take a look back at the top five plays of the LCS 2021 Summer Split. Let's get into it. How surprised are you that Core JJ would end up on this list? Not at all? Me neither. 20 minutes into the first game of the upper bracket finals and it's dead even. 100 Thieves own a two dragon lead while Team Liquid has 700 extra gold in their pockets. But that's about to change as 100 Thieves set their sights on Tactical in the mid lane. Someday starts it off with an Ornald to burn Tactical's Flash. Abadaga quickly follows up with his Realm War, burning Tactical's Cleanse with his Rune Prison and setting him up for FBI to come in and finish off the kill. Suddenly, it's a 5v4 in 100 Thieves' favor. While 100 Thieves knock down Tactical, Santorin and Alfari softened up their team. So after grabbing the kill, it's time for 100 Thieves to retreat. Alfari sneaks in the perfect accelerated shock blast through the team to hit FBI, procking his shield bro and granting vision. FBI then steps out of the brush to lifesteal off the minions, but in doing so, again gives vision to TL. And as he steps forward to ult, CoreJJ makes his move. The flawless rel combo snaps four members of 100 Thieves together, knocks them up, and lands the perfect follow-up stun with a track repel. The stun from Core JJ holds him in place just long enough for Jensen to flash in on Syndra and land a stun of his own, while Santorin charges in to mop him up. Four members of 100 Thieves go down, Team Liquid takes control the rest of the game, and the 100 Thieves Nexus explodes 12 minutes later. It's week five of the summer split, and Evil Geniuses and FlyQuest are going head to head. It's 27 minutes in, and EG have a massive 7,000 gold lead, plus three dragons. FlyQuest is looking for a way back into the game. And as Jizuke and Svenskeren make a play on Licorice in the bot lane. Big damage initially, and now Licorice, his days are numbered. Tries to get what damage he can, but it's never going to be enough. Trades back in Jizuke. Zodius is forced. This is FlyQuest's chance to strike back at the most valuable target in the game. The two kill, 550 gold bounty of Felios, piloted by Dan. As Jose Diotto's Lee Sin and Dreams Rakan move unseen through the river and into the mid lane brush, Johnson makes his move. He steps forward and all flashes in an attempt to lock down Danny for the incoming gank. But if there's one thing we learned this split, it's that you don't test Danny's mechanics. As Johnson breaks minion cover, he knows what's about to go down and ults at the same time as Johnson flashes in on him, then instantly flashes out of the way of Johnson's ult. Auto, Gale Force active, and another crit auto, Johnson is deleted off the map before Lee Sin and Rakan can even make it to the minion wave. And with that pick failed, FlyQuest crumbles and EG crews to close out the game four and a half minutes later. While it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for Cloud9 this summer, they picked up momentum over the weeks of play. And 32 minutes into their final game of the split against longtime rival TL, they had a huge gold lead and Cloud Soul on top. They were one fight away from victory. Cloud9 start up Baron to draw TL in, then look for the immediate turn as Perk spots them approaching with the TF ultimate. Perk stuns up Santorum with the gold card, then looks to flank with his ult as Fudge dives in on TL who are in full retreat. For a moment, it looks as though Fudge may have overextended, but C9 is all on the same page. They pass the brain check as Sven and Blabber flash in to follow up and Sven roasts them with the Inferno. Sven picks up the first four kills of the fight in quick succession. Then things get really fun because all of C9 is completely committed to getting Sven the final kill for the Penta. Perks uses his flash to stun up Jensen, who is almost home free. But Jensen uses his hourglass to avoid the stun, then casts a huge Emperor's Divide, knocking away four of the five Cloud9 members and sliding into his base looking like he's nearly home free. Unfortunately for Jensen, Vulcan got his exhaust down on him, slowing him as he tries to escape. And as Blabber sneaks around the Azir wall from the bottom, Sven uses the Gravitum route to set up Blabber for Wind Becomes Lightning, slowing down the Azir yet again and using the last of his ammo to swap over to Severum. This is critical as the move speed granted from Severum's Q is the only thing that lets Sven close the gap. At this point, only the patience of a saint prevents Blabber from stealing the Penta, and instead he's able to aggro a minion, pull it to Jensen, allowing Sven to swap back to the Infernum and hit the final shot through the minion to splash on a Jensen and collect the Penta kill. Or the Zventa kill, as Greywind 1988 calls it. The scoreboard may show the Penta kill as Sven's, but I'm going to credit this one to all of Cloud9. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. 
Gavin Flowers would have for sure stolen that one from me. This next clip comes from a little something I like to call match point in the 2021 LCS championships. Because it was match point in the 2021 LCS championships and 100 Thieves are on fire. We're 16 minutes in, 100 Thieves are taking Rift Herald while enjoying a huge early gold lead. And TL needs a win in this fight to keep their series hopes alive. Tactical is the only member on TL ahead of his counterpart in gold, and him having a good fight is essential to TL making anything happen in this game. As TL move in towards Harold, who he engages on Alfari, pushing him back and splitting him up from the rest of the team. Santorin, as a result, has to pull back and retreat to his team. But as he flashes out, he's rooted up by FBI, and Closer hits him with a sonic wave. Abadaga flashes in as Someday drops the cannon barrage onto the retreating TL, and Santorin again gets rooted up and pushed back towards his team. As Santorin retreats through the choke point, Closer sees his chance. He takes the resonating strike in on Santorin, then seamlessly safeguards to a warp, hitting the immediate Dragon's Rage to root up Tactical before he has a chance to flash out, then flashing behind him to redirect the kick, knocking Tactical through Jensen and into the waiting arms of his team, eliminating any chance of a TL win. Closer mops up the rest of the fight, grabbing himself a double kill, an LCS title, and series MVP. Not a bad day's work for Crawl Closer. Down 7.5k with the series on the line in Game 4, EG engaged mid lane. Someday drops a GP ulti and Danny immediately backs out of it, hitting Diego, then Kai'Sa as she moves into range. Nautilus hooks Danny, so Danny buffers his rocket jump, then stop watches as Kai'Sa ults in to burst him down, avoiding both the Kai'Sa damage and the incoming Nautilus ult. Coming out of stasis, he is constantly autoing, forcing Sterix on Diego, then forcing the stopwatch and Sterix from GP. 100 Thieves are running over the fight, and Realm Warp in to cut off EG's escape. Closer moves forward to stun Danny, but with PD fully stacked and Hail of Blades ready, Danny is able to get three quick autos off with Explosive Shot to burst down Closer, then narrowly flash away from Puhi's incoming hook. Having saved his rocket jump, as GP and Ryze arrive behind him, Danny goes aggressive, jumping forward and ulting Kai'Sa. FBI uses his stopwatch, so Danny turns to Huhi, killing him off to reset, then jumping the minimum distance forward to reduce airtime while still keeping away from Rise and GP. Kaisa goes in Viz, and Danny kites away, killing the GP barrel, then turns back to FBI to finish him off and get another reset. Critically, he doesn't waste this rocket jump, instead continues kiting away in the 1v2 to heal up off the incoming minions. As GP and Rise close in, and he's cut off by the enemy tower, Danny sidesteps a barrel chain into the tower while still avoiding the Rise Q by not going the expected route into the enemy jungle. Having avoided those abilities, he now uses the earlier saved rocket jump by hopping out of vision into the brush, leaving 100 Thieves to assume he's fully retreating. Instead, Danny looks for the kill. With abilities up and having forced someday Sterics and Stopwatch early in the fight, he bursts down the gangplank, then backsteps to avoid the Everfrost before using his reset rocket jump to put his own minions between him and the Rise, blocking any chance Abadaga has of getting a Q through to kill him off. Danny claims the delayed pentakill, saves the game, and secures himself a place in LCS history. Thanks so much for watching our official top five plays of the 2021 Summer Split. What did you think of the top five? Let us know in the comments below. Have any other plays you think should have made the list? Comment below. Think I missed anything important in these plays? Then keep your mouth shut. Just kidding, comment below. And until next time, subscribe to the YouTube channel to catch more great LCS content, and I'll see everyone at Worlds.